What's up guys and welcome back to the next episode of this Volkswagen Transporter T4 campervan conversion. So in today's episode we're going to be mounting a 250 watt solar panel onto the roof of the van. Now the roof's been finally painted as well as the rest of the van as well as you can see. It's all looking nice and neat and shiny. So now that it's all been painted I can finally get up onto the roof, get the solar panel mounted and that means I can then finally again get all the cables ran inside and then again finally i can be able to get all of the so uh, the carpet panels back in place getting the solar panels really held up the conversion but that in turn was held up by having to do all the body work and the paint work on the van now this is all done i can finally get this panel mounted so to get it mounted up on the roof i have some z brackets here that are going to be going into the corners of all four corners of the panel itself that will support the panel above the bracket, uh, above the roof, to give plenty of room for air ventilation beneath the panel as well. I've got some proper cables all made up with the MC4 connectors as well to run from the panel down to where the controller is going to be. And as you can see, I've got a Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller. This is the Bluetooth controller that you can connect to with your phone. And then on your phone, it gives you full readouts of how much power the, the solar panel has generated on a day, week and monthly basis. Just so you can keep track of exactly how much power is getting pushed through to the batteries, how much you're generating, and in theory, how much you're saving at the same time as well. Now, if you're looking for any of the bits that I'm gonna be fitting in this video, whether it's the solar panel, whether it's the mounting brackets, the cabling, or the Victron Smart MPPT solar controller, check the links in the description of the video below. That'll be going out to eBay where I bought pretty much all of the items that I'm be using for this conversion. The panel, the controller, the brackets, the cabling, pretty much everything's come off eBay. So if you're looking for similar bits, as I say, check beneath the video in the description. There'll be links going out to eBay where I bought all of these bits as well. So to get the panel on, as I say, first things first, we'll get the brackets mounted on all four corners of the panel. Then we'll get up on the roof with some step ladders and we're going to start drilling some holes into the freshly painted roof. Almost sounds like a sin, but it's how I prefer to mount the panels. I don't like using adhesive on a big solar panel like this. I'd much rather have a physical connection with some nice strong bolts going through the roof itself. So as I say, we're going to get the brackets mounted to the panel, the panel up on the roof. Then we'll get the cables fed through the roof down to where the control is going to be sat. And then we'll probably connect it up to a battery just to make sure everything's working as well. So let's get cracked on, get this panel mounted on the roof. And by the end of the video, we'll see what it all looks like with the mounted panel and with all the cabling run interior down to where the control is going to go. So let's get some safety gear out, some tools out. Let's get crack cracked on and let's see what it looks like at the end of the video.
Right, so that's the solar panel mounted onto the roof and that's definitely not going to be going anywhere at all and all of the holes are double sealed to make sure that they're going to be watertight as much as possible and when I say double sealed, what I've done is I've put sealant underneath the bracket around the hole so when the bracket is compressed down on the hole that's put some sealant all the way around the hole underneath the bracket and then when I've put the bolts through I've also put sealant around the tip top of the actual bolt itself so again, when that goes all the way to the bracket, that puts another bit of sealant going around the top where the bolt goes through the bracket and is secured underneath as well. So doubly secured, doubly uh, protected against any sort of water leaks or anything like that. That's both sides fully in now as well. So now all I've got to do is get the cable from the panel itself through the roof. And for that, I've been out and I've bought a IP65 rated junction box. This is just going to go on the roof. I'm going to pop out that little rubber underneath and drill a hole through the roof again. And that's basically going to have the cables going through the roof, through the watertight IP65 junction box. It'll probably come out round about here somewhere and then it'll just be fed across down the side and I'll be able to feed it into the back behind this uh, insulation panel. So let's get that IP65 junction box mounted onto the roof first. We'll get the cables fed in and then we'll get the cabling fed all the way around inside internally. Right, so with the panel mounted to the roof and the cables fed through the roof via the waterproof IP65 junction box. This is the positive and negative coming from the panel. I've then ran part of the 5 meter extension cables that again that will be linked below. All the way beneath the uh, insulation panels going up through that little brace. Again above this insulation panel and it's just coming out the top here. This is all going to get tucked up behind the headline and when the headline is on in place. And just to show the full <coughs> the full circuit working, I've got one of the batteries out that I'm going to be fitting. I'm going to be fitting two of these UASA batteries into the van, and that'll give nearly 200 amp hours of deep cycle power. But just to show the full circuit working, I'm just going to get it all connected up, just to make sure that everything's working fine. It's not obviously going to be in its final places, because all of this is going to get boxed in underneath where the probably the sofa bed's going to be running down the driver's side. But I just want to make sure where everything's going to be working first before I start building everything up and putting all the panels in place. So to test the controller itself, you always have to connect the battery to the controller first before connecting the panel to the controller. It's one of the things you need to do with pretty much every controller, regardless of the brand or make or model, anything like that. Always connect the battery to the controller first, then the panel to the PV input of the, uh, of the controller as well. I'll get this connected up, I'll get the uh, video picked back up again and we should be able to see some charge flowing through from the solar panel into the battery and hopefully I should be able to get it all configured with the Bluetooth app as well so I should be able to see all the readouts on my phone. So I'm just going to get all of this connected up now and I'll pick it back up when it's all connected and show you the output coming through from the panel. Right guys, so that's everything actually wired up. The solar controller is fully wired to both the panel and to the battery. I've also got the app configured by the Bluetooth because this is the smart solar so it has Bluetooth output. So you can see exactly how much power is being generated on the app on the phone as well. 
and as you can see it's only generating 19 20 watts at the moment and that's because the weather has just turned there's absolutely no sun it's quite gray and cloudy and it's actually just started uh, to rain a couple of minutes ago but as you can see it's still actually putting a little bit of charge through into the batteries and I'll probably pick this back up later on when it's a bit more sunny because just showing 18 watts doesn't show a great deal of power being generated but as you can see I'm not really expecting much with the sort of overcast dark clouds that we have in the sky anyway but it shows that it's working it shows that the panel's working it's putting power through to the controller and the controller's putting the power through to the battery as well we just need more sunny skies to be able to put uh, a higher power into the battery itself and just to show the solar charger one final time with a bit more sun powering through it as you can see it's now generating 75 watts and this is nearly at 5 p.m as well and that's still putting nearly 5 amp through as you can see charging power through into the batteries as well as you can see i'm cracking on with the electrics as well the vast majority of the electrics will probably get covered in a separate video but i've got the two batteries connected as well so that's 180 amp hours worth there and that's what's currently getting charged via the smart solar solar controller via the solar panel that's on the roof as well as you can see it's a much brighter sunnier day today but it is also getting into the evening as well but even getting five amps towards the evening time that's still quite a good amount of charge just to be putting through into the batteries as well so that's how i've wired up the solar panel under the roof with the victron smart solar bluetooth mppt solar controller wired down to the uasa batteries and fed through via the bluetooth app on the phone as you can see here so if you have to, any of the bits that I've fitted in this conversion on this video, whether it's the solar panel, whether it's the charge controller, batteries, cabling, anything like that, check the link in the description beneath the video. That'll be going out to eBay where I pretty much bought the vast majority of the items for this conversion, as well as the previous conversions that I've done as well. So whenever I'm putting videos out, check the links in the description. That'll go out to eBay where I've bought any items featured in that video. So I hope you found this video useful itself. If you did, consider giving it a good old thumbs up. If you're new, consider hitting subscribe as well. There's weekly videos at the moment as we go through the build out of this VW T4 camper van conversion. And hopefully I'll see you on next week's video as we crack on with this conversion as we go on. Thanks for watching. Cheers.